um, and they're Chicago, Toronto, and Tokyo. Just to kind of brief those who don't know or aren't familiar with the intern group, kind of a little who are we. Um, the intern group, we're an award-winning social enterprise, and we take applicants from all over the world, um, and our goal is to improve their skills, their employability with an international internship. Um, we have full-time teams who live in all of our destinations to assist our interns, um, and we were founded in 2011, so since then we've helped thousands of participants. We receive applications from all over the world. So I know I was chatting with you guys earlier, asking where you're from. Um, we receive applications from over 100 countries every year. Um, and we you know, send different nationalities to, to international internships. Um, so we're a very multicultural organization, which is something that we're very proud of. Um, and we also partner with different universities around the world. Some of them include Northeastern University in the US, um, the London School of Economics, um, was University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh is also in the U.S., National University of Singapore, um, HKUST in Hong Kong, and the University of New South Wales in Australia. Um, so those are just a few. We have around 30 different university partnerships at the moment. Um, how does it work is a question that I get a lot, um, and I've kind of just simplified it into three steps here. So the first step, if you're interested in, in an internship, you would apply online on our website. Um, and from there, you're able to book an interview with our admissions team, which is over Skype or phone. Um, so we do prefer Skype interviews just because it does make it more personal if we can see you. Um, but we do also do phone interviews. And if your interview is successful, um, you would be guaranteed an internship in your career fields that you've chosen, in the destination that you've chosen, and for the duration of time that you've chosen. And you would confirm your spot into the program with a deposit. And then step three is probably the most condensed, but you would essentially um, pack your bags and get ready for your experience abroad because the intern group, we organize basically everything. So we help with visas, we get housing set up, we would set you up with an interview so that you have an internship internationally. Um, we have staff living in our destinations again, so we you know, organize the logistics of transportation, airport pickup, um, things of that nature. And um, yeah, so we just leave it to you to make sure that you would pack and um, get ready to go abroad. So the interview itself um, is kind of broken up into four specific topics. So we start with an introduction. Um, we talk about the destination that you're interested in. We talk about the career fields that you're interested in and then gather extra information. Um, so the interviews themselves are done by a member of our admissions team and again they will contact you over the phone or on Skype and we would review your resume or your CV before and prepare questions that are based on your background and your experiences. So we'll ask you really targeted questions to you and you can talk about the kind of experiences you have, what kind of internship you're looking for, what kind of career you're hoping to have in the future um, and ask any questions again to the admissions team during that interview. And then your application would be reviewed by our program director, and you would have the results back within two to three business days. Our program is open year round. Um, so a lot of people think that we might maybe are just a summer program or you know a break a holiday break program or something like that. You can go year round. Um, so we do have start dates on select Saturdays of the month. Usually it's the first Saturday of the month. And the internship durations can vary between four weeks as a minimum and six months as a maximum. And those vary slightly depending on the destinations. So for example, our four-week programs are available in Hong Kong and Shanghai. The average minimum duration is six weeks um, and the average maximum duration is six months. And we do accept the applications on a rolling basis. Um, so there's no official start date to apply, but rather we do close the start dates um, once the, the programs are filled to capacity. So you can apply on a rolling basis. We recommend to apply around six months in advance. And then I mentioned this at the beginning, but Chicago, Toronto, and Tokyo start dates are open in 2018. So the first group of interns will arrive in January of next year to those three new destinations. Um, so this this presentation really focuses on those three new ones, but just to give you a recap on the existing locations, um, we offer internships in Madrid, Spain. We are in Latin America in the country of Colombia. Um, we are in New York City and Shanghai, um, Australia. We're located in Melbourne. We are in Dublin, Hong Kong, and London as well. 
So our program really is a full package program and we include, of course, first and foremost, a professional internship in your career field of choice that does match your professional development goals. So each of our interns goes through a placement process um, with their, their in-country team or the, the people who are located in their destination they've chosen where they would go over their experiences, um, you know, their ambitions for an internship, what they're looking for, and we would match you with an internship based on that information. Accommodation is included in all of our destinations as well. Um, so that would be your own private bedroom and a shared apartment in the city where you'd be located. We have that emergency support from our staff. So we do have, um, it's kind of a unique feature to our organization where we do have full-time staff living in each destination. So they're physically there. If you have any problems, if you needed a member of our staff for any reason, they have, we offer that 24-7 emergency support. Um, we offer professional development tools. We have training and a workshop available to everybody. And then we also include cultural excursions and meetups in, in the cities. So it depends on the location, what's included. Um, I'll go over the ones that are included for Chicago, Toronto, and Tokyo today. Um, we've recently added a new feature, which is an alumni success coach. So each of our um, alumni from the program, so after you finish, does have the opportunity for an, a one-on-one -on -one session with a professional career coach that would last for an hour. Um, so we have different coaches to choose from. I can go into more detail on that later, but that's also included in the program, and then visa assistance as well. So we walk each of our interns through the visa process and make sure that they are um, you know, equipped with the information and the forms that they need to fill out so that they can get the proper visa for their program. We don't have a set list of requirements, but rather we evaluate each person on an individual basis. So what we're looking for in general um, is educational background, experiences, future ambitions. We're really looking for applicants who have a passion to explore the world, who are interested in a cross-cultural experience, who you know are interested in traveling, want to gain hands-on development in their career field, and who also consider themselves to be global leaders in their industry. Um, so here at the intern group, we you know are passionate and we have four values that we live by, which is people focus, um, teamwork, continuous learning, and global leadership. So we're looking for interns who fulfill those four values and who would really consider themselves to be a global leader. Um, and that's why, you know, that's the point of our program is to, to get out of your comfort zone, to have an international experience and to move forward in the future because of that. And our career fields. So we offer many different career fields to choose from and applicants are able to choose two um, when they apply to the program. So you can see here in this graphic, we have anything from, let's see, international business to journalism. Um, down in the purple, we have medical electives. Um, we have hospitality and tourism. So again, two career fields are, are in the application. You can choose your primary and your secondary preference. And then if you're accepted into the program, you're guaranteed an internship in those two fields. So just a little bit more detail on the professional development tools that are offered. Um, the workshop that we have is, is a training workshop to enable our participants to talk with confidence, to control their body language, and to build confidence in the workplace. Um, and we also partner with DDI International, which is an HR assessment. So this provides all of our participants with a workplace personality and skills assessment that they would take prior to arriving on their internship. And it really helps to see, um, you know, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you can work on, um, you know, what kind of skills that you have that would propel you forward in your internship. And it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool, you know, way to see yourself. A lot of people find it very interesting. Um, and then again, we have our alumni success coaches. So we, they offer a personalized session after completion of your internship on a variety of topics. So that could be um, how to use your internship in an interview, how to brand on LinkedIn, um, how to negotiate a salary when you're you know, applying for your first job. So you can pick um, one coach and you would have that free one hour session with them. Okay. So now we'll get into our new destinations. Um, so for those of you who maybe have never been or who don't know, this is the Chicago skyline. Um, you can see that Ferris wheel down in the center, that's on Navy Pier. Um, the building with those two sort of antennas sticking out from it, that's called the Willis Tower or um, the Sears Tower down Hancock building is in this picture as well. So this is the skyline for Chicago. 
All right, and our program in Chicago. Um, so Chicago is called, it's nicknamed the Windy City. It's the third largest city in the U.S., so the population is about two and a half million um, in this city, and it's located in the Midwest of the U.S. Um, in Chicago, our strong industries will be commerce, finance, engineering, publishing. Um, so we will offer all career fields in Chicago, but these are going to be definitely the ones that stand out just based on the industries that are located here. Um, the excursions that we will plan in Chicago, we do a trip to Navy Pier, which in the previous picture, um, you can see that Ferris wheel. There's a Chicago architecture cruise. So you can't really see in the photo here, but kind of in the main, in the heart of Chicago, that there's a river that flows through it called the Chicago River. Um, and we would, you know, set up that cruise where you cruise down the river on a boat and they talk about the architecture in Chicago. It's really, really cool. It's fascinating. Um, we go to the Art Institute of Chicago as well and the Field Museum. Um, transportation is included in this um, location. So the locals call their metro system or their subway the L because really instead of being underground, it's above ground. It's elevated. So it's called the L um, to the locals. locals and yeah, the fact that it's a huge city and a lake Toronto. <laughs> um, so Toronto is our first Canadian location that we're opening um, and it's actually one of the most multicultural cities in the world over half of the population was born outside of Canada so that's super cool um, over 140 different languages are spoken in Toronto as well um, and it is the largest city in Canada. So it's not actually the capital. A lot of people think that it is the capital of Canada, um, being that it's the largest city. But Ottawa is the capital, and Toronto is the biggest city. <clears throat> Our Toronto program is an international hub for finance and business, but we'll also focus on technology, art, design, and fashion in this location. Our program um, inclusions will take our interns to the CN Tower, which, let me just go back, it's that large tower right in the middle. That's the CN Tower. Um, they go on a Toronto Harbor tour, <clears throat> the Ripley's Aquarium of Canada, and also a walking tour of Toronto. And then included in all of our programs, of course, we do have that full-time staff in Toronto offering 24-7 support. And last but certainly not least, um, we will go over our Tokyo program here. Um, so you can see the beautiful skyline of Tokyo with the Tokyo Tower there in the background. Now Tokyo is one of the most important cities in Asia. So it's called the Command City along with New York City and London. Um, so obviously it's a huge international hub. Um, you know, it's one of the largest cities in the world in terms of population um, and a huge powerhouse in Asia. It is a hub for us for innovation and technologies. So companies like Sony, Canon, and Honda all hail from Tokyo. Um, so for us, it's really going to be a great location for creative industries, um, computer science, IT, technology, really anything kind of on the creative cusp. Um, we would you know, focus your attention to Tokyo. Um, included in our Tokyo program, we do a trip to Mount Fuji, which you can't see in the picture, but it's the, the famous volcano that's in the background of many Tokyo photos. Um, the Tokyo Tower. There's a sushi workshop included, and also a Japanese food tour. Um, so food is super, super important to the Japanese culture and population, so we want to incorporate that with our interns as well. Um, of course, the local language in Tokyo is Japanese, so Japanese lessons are available to our interns um, on evenings and during the weekends if they want to take. It's not required. Um, our programs are geared towards English speakers, so the majority of internships will be in English, but for those who do speak Japanese or would like to learn Japanese while they would potentially be on an internship. Um, we will offer those add-on classes um, to those who are interested. And then again, our full-time staff located in Tokyo offering that 24-7 support. Okay, so continuing on with just some more kind of frequently asked questions. 
um, where we've placed our past interns. So the, the placement process that each of our interns go through is very thorough, it's very collaborative, um, and they would, you know, speak with our placement coordinators in their destination again where they'd go over their background. We would review your CV, send your CV out to companies that really match your profile. Um, but a lot of people want to know, you know, what kind of companies are we affiliated with, where have we placed past interns, and this is just some, these are just, excuse me, some examples. Um, so you can see here, let's see, FIFA, we placed interns there in our Columbia destination, um, Chanel in New York City, Grant Thornton, we've placed interns with the Colombian government, you can see that seal, the Republica de Colombia, um, with the Guggenheim Museum as well. So these are just examples just to really show the quality um, of the host organizations that we are affiliated with. I always recommend to check out our YouTube channel though because we do have testimonial and success story videos from our alumni where they go over their internships and talk about their experience with their host company. So that's another way to see some more examples and we do have more listed on our website too. Um, the intern group, you know, why I choose the intern group for an internship? Um, we do offer, again, that personalized placement process with our expert teams. We are really focused on the professional development alongside of cultural immersion. So those are the two main aspects of the program and the reason why our organization exists. It's to send students abroad or recent graduates who would like to grit that professional development and who would like to immerse themselves culturally. So we really do aim for our participants to feel like a local in the city that they're living in, to have a true experience living in a new city and in a new country. And we do have a reputation as being a leading provider of international interns. Um, so you can know these two seals we have from goabroad.com, which is a review site. Um, in 2015, we were a notable mention for the top internship organization. And then in 2016, we actually won top internship organization from goabroad.com. Um, so again, goabroad.com is a review site where we do have um, alumni with their experience with the intern group. That's another site that I always recommend people go to um, because it's really informative. It's kind of a first-hand review from our own alumni, what they thought about the program. Um, so it's a really great way to get more information. All right, and we've been featured in many different publications. Um, so I just posted a few here. The first um, one, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, the picture of the four women, that is actually our Columbia team, and they were in an article published by Forbes um, last year, actually. <clears throat> so we're there. Um, you can see us featured in Time on CNN. And then these two ones at the bottom, I talked about Go Abroad already. Um, so goabroad.com, again, is a review site. And then gooverseas.com is another review site that I always recommend. And you can connect with us um, many different ways. We are on Facebook. Um, so I'm sure some of you are following us on Facebook, maybe have seen this webinar posted on our Facebook. We're there. Um, we're also on Snapchat. We are on Instagram. We're on Twitter. And one of my favorite um, places where you can find us is Spotify. Um, so we do make playlists for all of our destinations, which are really fun. So we post songs and update them with popular songs that are in the countries. So it could be an artist maybe you've never heard of before, or a song you've never heard of in a new language. So that's a really fun way to interact with us and also to hear music from around the world on our Spotify playlists. Um, and then on Snapchat, we actually feature stories from different destinations each week. So if you follow us and check out our story, you can see what's happening around all of our destinations. Um, who is featured this week? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, but you can check us out and you can see who's featured on the Snapchat story, which we alternate on a weekly basis. Okay, so to apply, it's actually right on our website. Um, there's a green button in the upper corner, of the, on the upper right-hand corner, excuse me, of our website, where you can apply. Um, and any questions, you can always email us or talk to us on the phone. So we have a UK, a US, and an Australian number, and then this email, which actually goes to me, which is info at the intern group .com. Um, and after this session is over, I'll actually direct you guys right to the application page. So if you want a quick send us an application and you can sign up to have um, an interview later on, um, just maybe to sign up. But um, again, these are ways to get in touch with us. I'm very happy to talk to anybody on the phone, to answer any questions via email um, and answer any questions today. 
So that was our presentation for today. Um, I will minimize this and then I'm going to open up the chat box again. So if we have any questions right now, I'm very happy to go over them. If you want to just send me a quick message in the box and we can go from there. So thanks again guys for participating today. Um, we're really, really excited to open up those three new destinations. Um, so with Chicago and Toronto, we now have three locations in North America. And then with Tokyo, we have three locations in Asia. <clears throat> so you should be able to see the box to chat. If you guys want to chat me any questions now, please do so. Okay, so I see kind of a half question. I think it might have gotten cut off. I have, is it only four? <laughs> and then I can't see the rest. So if you want to finish that question, um, Daphne. And any other questions too. Um, our website is really informative. So I'll send you guys again to the, to the website afterwards. Um, but there's a FAQ section on the website and then all of our locations have um, their own you know, photos, they have requirements, eligibility, etc. Okay, so is it only for these three cities that we can apply for? Definitely not. So this webinar was just kind of highlighting our new three cities that are opening, but all of our cities are open for applications right now. Um, so we have 11 locations in total. Um, so we're located, let's see, in New York City, Chicago, Toronto, Madrid, London, Dublin, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Australia, and Latin America. Um, so for the the they're not old destinations, but for the not new destinations of those eight, um, you can apply whenever. Um, those are open right now. But for the new ones, those we are accepting applications, but the first start dates will be um, in January of 2018. Great question. Okay. Ooh, I like this question. So with a Tokyo internship being an English-speaking one, will we have English-speaking coworkers for instance? That's a really good question. Um, so the, the manager or the person that would be in charge of your internship would definitely speak English. Um, however, not all of the coworkers might not speak English. So it's really actually a cool way to integrate into a new culture, um, to practice a new language. You know, it's not necessarily that everybody in the office would speak English. Um, you would have English speaking coworkers there to help you and to kind of, you know, move you along and, and you know, focus on your professional development. Um, but no, not all of them, likely, in the likely case, not all of them would be English speakers. Okay, cool. Next question. <clears throat> do you have programs that start in January 2018 or do you have anything ready to start in London or Madrid, for example, in October? Yes. So, Andrea, um, we do have programs. Actually, London and Madrid are both accepting applications for this fall. So if you're interested in those two locations, you can definitely still apply for both of them. Um, and all of our locations are open for this fall and winter um, of 2017. So great question. All right, we have another question, let's see, from Prasanna. What will be the total cost in payment? That's another excellent question. Um, the program fees vary depending on where you want to go and how long you want to go for. Um, so it really varies depending on the cost of living in each country that we're located in. You know, the housing is included in that, that program fee as well, so that has a, a factor on it. Um, but you can see all of the program fees on the website, and the payments themselves are broken into um, three separate parts. So we don't expect a lump sum or anything like that. You would be able to create a payment plan with your program coordinator. Um, the first step, though, would be that 500 British pound deposit, which is due if you are accepted into the program and then would like to move forward. Okay, so we have a, another question. Um, let's see. Currently participating from Italy. Hello from Italy. <laughs> Jung, um, thank you. I'd like to apply for a position in the next few days. I just have one question. Where can I check out all the destinations? Great question. Um, all the destinations are listed on our website. So actually, once I close this presentation, all of the, the participants in this webinar will be redirected to our website. So you don't even have to go on your own. <laughs> it will automatically take you there. Um, and you can check out the website. So th there's a live chat service on the website. If you have some more questions, you want to chat to us, you can definitely do that. 
Um, if you, you know, have a question and you want a quick call, you can call our office and talk to us on the phone. Um, but all the destinations are listed on the website. You can see photos from them. You can see all the eligibility requirements, the start dates, the program fees, etc. It's all there. Yes. Okay. So another question. Do you have any archives where we can see or have a look at where previous interns went, what they did, the company they interned for, etc.? Yes. Um, our YouTube channel is going to be the best place for that. Um, and I'll send you guys all an email to you afterwards today. Um, and I'll include the YouTube link in there. So if you go to YouTube and just search in the intern group, you'll find our page there. Um, and that's a really, really great resource to, to just hear from our own interns and our own alumni, where they went, what they did, what company they interned for, et cetera. Um, in the application process, you can also ask to speak to an alumni. We have um, alumni email addresses and contacts that we can give out if you wanted to email them on your own and ask any questions. Um, we're definitely able to do that, too. So the first thing I recommend is the YouTube channel to see what you know, interns did, what kind of, of internship they had, what kind of responsibilities they had on their program. Um, and then from there, if you wanted to speak to anybody in more detail, we can set you up with an alumni contact. All right, anything available from March of 2018? Yes, we have everything available from March of 2018. Um, so all of the programs are open then, and I think the, the start is on the first Saturday in March. Um, so yes, everything is open in March. All right, another great question. So the intern, the program fee does not include flights, um, but is there any way you offer a group flight option so we get to meet the other interns going to the same place as me? Um, yes, so that's another um, interesting question, actually, that I get a lot. What happens is those who are on a program who are enrolled in the same start date and in the same maybe you know, time of year, so let's say all the summer interns, um, they would join a Facebook group, and that group is really helpful if you wanted to chat with the other participants. We have a lot of participants who, you know, maybe find out they're from the same country or the same state, and they want to fly together. So you would be um, invited to that Facebook group before the start of your internship, where you could chat with the others who are going with you at the same time, um, and then potentially fly together. So that's an excellent question. What will the total process time be from, uh, let's see, from resume submission to starting an internship? Um, let's see. Our replacement can start any time. Okay, so the question was kind of about the total processing time. Um, it takes about three weeks in general for the total processing time. So you can apply to the program um, from there after you submit the application and submit, uh, and submit the CV, excuse me, to our admissions team. You can sign up to have an interview. And from that sign-up interview day, you have eight days in advance to actually schedule your interview. Um, so after the interview is scheduled, you would hear back from the admissions team with the results within two to three days. Um, so the whole process itself can be wrapped up in about two to three weeks. Um, again, we recommend applying around six months in advance because the programs, A, fill up to capacity, and B, we need to have enough time to get a visa. Um, so six months is kind of the sweet spot where you can still have time to, you know, fit into the intern start date, but also get a visa. Um, and you can apply anytime. So for example, we open up all the um, start dates about 18 months in advance. Um, so right now, all 2018 start dates are open to receive application if you wanted to start in November of 2018, for example. Um, but the total time from, you know, submission of the application and resume to hearing back from the admissions team after your interview with the results takes around two to three weeks. Okay, let's see. I have another question from Andrea that I think got cut off. So I have, does a visa work for, and then I can't see the rest. Um, but I have another question here um, from Ajat. So it says, as you said, for the Tokyo internship, not all workers will be English speakers. Will that not affect the quality of the internship due to communication difficulties with coworkers? That's a really good question and an interesting one, too. Um, you know, so for the main part of the internship, your responsibilities would be in English. So for example, if you were in Tokyo, we wouldn't expect you to write in Japanese or to be able to speak Japanese. But the, the main part of your internship and the main, um, you know, manager, the person who is overseeing your internship would be speaking English to you. So your responsibilities and your main source of, you know, work and your main source of responsibilities coming from your program would be in English. 
Um, so that's really part of the process too, is to, you know, if you aren't able to communicate with somebody right away, be able to, you know, problem solve and figure out how you could speak to your coworkers, or you know, maybe they could, you could teach them some English and they could teach you some, in this case, Japanese. Um, that's really part of the process, though. So it's part of the, the, the goal of our program is to get that intercultural communication and intercultural experience. However, um, I don't want anybody to think that they wouldn't have responsibilities or they wouldn't be able to. Um, you know, focus on their internship due to lack of being able to speak the local language. Um, you would still be able to, to communicate with your supervisor in English. That's a great question. All right, and Andrea, I'm not sure if you can, if you're still there, but I have a question from you that I think got cut off about visas. Um, so does a visa work for, and then I can Okay, um, I think that was it. So I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, again, I want to thank every one of you guys for being here, for participating in this webinar. It was super great to, to talk to you guys and answer your questions. Um, and I, I know that we have people from all over the world, so it was really cool um, to be able to, to, to speak to everybody and to have everybody on one platform. Um, again, my name is Kaylee, so if you have any questions that you want to ask me personally, um, talk to me personally, you can follow that email address um, that I've listed here in the presentation. Let's see, on the previous slide. Um, so it's info at the intern group .com. And then again, once we do close out of here, I'll, I'll forward you guys all to the website. So you can check the website out if you have any questions. Again, contact me. Um, but again, thank you so, so much for being here today, for participating. And we look forward to seeing every one of your applications.